How's it going ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video with me, OLT. In this one, we are going to be getting into the five things I've heard about this Peugeot 208 GT model. And I know this one car of the year in 2020 and I've read some pretty positive reviews on it online and seen CarWow and stuff do a pretty good review on it. But I am going to get into the five things I've hated while having this car for the last few days. Um, it hasn't all been doom and gloom with it, to be honest. It has been a pretty decent car. And I was pleasantly surprised after always kind of having a bad vibe towards Peugeot. I don't know why. Um, I've kind of always thought they're not great cars. But after having this one, there is some things that I did actually enjoy about it. But we're going to get into the five things I've hated in this one. Be, ch yeah, be sure to check into the five things I love about this one as well because it's not been as awful as you'd imagine and there is some things that I've really liked about this car. So let's get in this video. The first thing, and it's actually pretty major, I would say about this one, um, is actually gonna be the steering wheel position uh, on this one. And it's pretty much because I just don't like where this is positioned at all. Um, I'm gonna quickly change the zoom on this so you get a better angle. Right, hopefully this gives you a better view of the sort of seating position while you are sat in this car. Um, I'm holding this basically to my face so you can see exactly what my eyes sort of see as I'm sat here. Um, and if you haven't noticed already, the steering wheel actually blocks quite a lot of the digital dash. You, if I was to... I'll just start this up. If you start this up and you sit like this... Don't want that. You actually can't see pretty much half of the digital dash you lean forward and that's when you get the rest of it um i know you can say oh move this up and down up and down whatever this is about as low as it goes without me not being able to stretch my legs underneath the wheel um and it's about as low as it goes without being able to sit like this and drive obviously like this so i just i, I don't get it i don't know why the wheel's positioned the way it is it looks super cool and clean i love this design but the way it sits just really isn't very good. Um, I've tried everything. I've tried pulling it out, pushing it in, bringing it up, lowering it, absolutely everything. This was the best I could get it. And unfortunately, as you can see, it does block out half of the um, digital dash there. If they fix that, I don't really think there'd be that many flaws um, with this car. Or maybe not that many flaws, I'm going to give you five. But I don't think I would have not like this car as much as i haven't or disliked it as much as i have this is the the main one i'm putting this at number one because this is the biggest one um manu matt watson on car wow um mentioned this as well and it, it is so so frustrating if they sorted this this would be a really 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 good steering wheel and sort of driving position and cockpit to have in a, a super mini if that's the category you want to put this in or just a, a small hatchback so yeah the first thing the steering wheel position and the way it then affects your driving position and your your visual aspect on the, the, the cockpit in front of you now the second thing is something a lot of people have give us stick for um being a, a young driver and whatever and that's actually going to be this screen the screen itself is good don't get us wrong but there is no way, as you can see, there is no way down here that is a, a physical turn, a physical turn, a physical dial that turns or a, a touchpad that you can swipe over. Everything you do on this car goes on here. These ones here are all um, haptic sort of actual buttons, whereas the ones on top are all sort of finger response. But this screen itself is completely touch screen it's not the fastest as you can see it, it takes a little bit of response to certain things but if i'm driving away it's it's a bit of a stretch to reach it in the first place but it also makes it rather difficult to use when you're driving if you had the little turn dial like the audis the mercedes etc like that this would become a lot easier to use i know what you're going to say oh you've always raved on about how touch screens the way forward in cars i do like a touch screen but i do think you also need a secondary um, way of communicating with this screen or using this screen and controlling it, whatever you want to say. I do think you need that as well. I don't think you can just completely go off touch screen because if you go on touch alone, um, sometimes it doesn't respond. Sometimes it doesn't pick up your, your finger pressing it. Um, 
you try to keep your eyes on the road so you're kind of just touching it touching it wherever and hoping for the best so i think if they could have included some sort of touch dial with this one i think it would be a much better design and i think it would have worked a lot better third thing then is actually going to involve the screen again and that's going to be when apple carplay is active um, I haven't got my charger ones at the moment to plug my phone in and bring up Apple CarPlay. But when CarPlay comes on, if you can see sort of this black line and this black line here, that is where CarPlay sits. This area on the side, both sides, remains and so does the bottom. So you actually get the 7-inch display. Well, I mean, I don't know if that is 7-inch. But you get the the smaller display that actually the lesser models of this car get. So instead of it filling the whole display, like other models, um, so like your, your Mercedes, your Audis and stuff, where CarPlay takes up the whole screen, you actually only get sort of that that area there as CarPlay, and this remains as if you wanted to touch um, these Peugeot sort of infotainment areas. And I, I just, it looked a bit naff. I, I really didn't like it. Um, Everything being sort of squidged into just that little space made it a lot harder to use, um, a lot harder to touch what I wanted to touch, and I just think it would look so much cleaner if it was all the way across. So that's going to be the third thing that... Um, actually, am I going to put that in the third thing or am I just going to leave that in the screen section? I'm actually just going to leave that in the, the issues with the screen. Um, so that kind of is like an added one onto the second thing I hate of it being a touch screen and having no other physical communication with it. Um, and the fact that it's a bit slow so this screen as a whole looks really good has a nice definition whatever else but doesn't have a physical dial to it carplay on it doesn't look the best and it can be a little bit slow compare you saw your mercedes your audis um bmws coming on to the third thing then that i haven't liked about this car and i'm actually think i'm going to stay in the car for everything about this one i don't think there's anything exterior wise that i don't like about it maybe i'll do the next one outside the car though but for the third thing is actually going to be the cruise control. So as you can see from where you've, I've, um, this also links in the first one. As you can see from where I've actually placed the steering wheel, you can't actually see the cruise control dial. It is behind here. Um, not only do I not like the fact that I can't see this, so this can actually be really hard to use without being able to see it. And obviously the only time you're going to be able to use it is when you're driving. Not being able to see that, I don't really know what I'm pressing. I know these um, steering wheel col steering wheel columns, um, analog stick columns, whatever you want to call them, uh, are pretty generic. If it has one of them, they're pretty much laid out the same in every car. But I don't use them very often. And every car I seem to drive has cruise control on the wheel. And that is going to be the third thing. Why isn't the cruise control on the wheel? Because with this steering wheel, it's very modern. It's very nice design whatever else but it's really basic so this is going to be my third and kind of my fourth aspect as well as the first one with this one they're kind of all tying to each other i'm going to say the steer the cruise control not being on the wheel is the third thing and if you really want to add a fourth thing i'm i'm just going to tie this into one as a third this wheel looks nice but it's pretty basic. You obviously have your voice control, your volume up and down, your slider for, if this works, that no, doesn't work well, oh, it does. That slides through obviously different things for your instrument cluster. Um, on the right then you have your list of sort of stations, your source and your phone, as well as this one will slide through obviously your radio stations or your songs if you are using Bluetooth. <sighs> I just think, yeah as a whole the cruise control uh analog stick whatever um is poor it's in a really bad place it's very generic and the wheel itself if i was going to put it onto a whole thing i think it should go on the wheel and i think the wheel should be a bit more it's lovely all right the wheel should be a bit more um advanced in terms of matching the futuristic look of it and design of it, I think it should have a lot more buttons on it to make it easier to use while you're driving. The fourth thing then that I really haven't liked about this car is actually going to be the storage space and more importantly, the positioning of these cup holders down here. 
I'm someone who likes to carry water with us in the car, whether that be a Chili's bottle or just a normal bottle of water. I actually have an Evian bottle down here. As you can see, it's down there because that's the only place this will actually fit comfortably. If you try and put it in that one, it's too big. Put it in this one, you have to squeeze it in, bit of a tight one. But the problem you then have is, especially if you have the manual version of this car, is changing gear, you're just whacking off that all the time. Why are they there? I understand a lot of cars do it, but I think, especially if you have a manual, there should be one there and one there, or just somewhere else other than here, because you either have to put your hand on it and it's just uncomfortable and you've not really got a grip of it, or you have to go around it, and obviously that isn't great for trying to put your car into gear. So we're going to start with there. The cup holders there aren't great. The door bins are completely fine, holds it perfectly well. Maybe wouldn't fit a Chili's bottle, but that's a um, 750 milliliter bottle and it holds it perfectly fine. In the middle then, I didn't mind this whatsoever. I actually quite like that there's a little part here for your keys, which you can remove if you want to make that. That's actually a pretty big, um, or pretty deep, should I say, uh, storage cubby holder. The one thing I didn't like about it though, there's no USBs, and that is kind of going to tie into another thing I was going to mention. I'm not going to actually use that as a full thing I hate about this car, but there is hardly, well, there's two, and there's one if you are only on USB. This one's a USB-C or Android. Um, there's only two charging ports in this car. Uh, every other car seems to have one in there, so if you don't put your phone in there, you've got, or you want to charge it, it's got to be at the front of the car, which then makes another bit different. If you have a wire here, if this is full, and obviously you can't fit your phone in there, but it's just wires everywhere and I'm one for keeping things tidy and a bit of OCD. So yeah, the storage space in this one isn't ideal in the position of a few things I haven't necessarily liked. I think if you move the USBs into the center console bin, it would be a lot better. I think if you move these, in the manuals that is, move these to here and move the gear slightly back, that would be a lot better way of looking at it. I know you can completely avoid using these wires if you were to spec the wireless charging port, that which I'm pretty sure goes here. Um, there's a few things you can change with different specs, or obviously per, you can't physically change that, but if you've got, a, if you've got an automatic, it wouldn't matter if you have anything here. If you've got the wireless charging cable, it wouldn't matter about these two and not having one in here. So there's a few things that all tie into one about the storage space and also the functionality. Last on the storage space is actually this. You only get half of a glove box, which I really don't understand. As you can see, it's enough to fit in your sort of your logbook and whatever else, but not much else. Um, you really will struggle to fit anything of note in there if you wanted to keep anything in there. So that's going to be the fourth thing, and we will get on to the last one now. For the fifth and final thing that I don't really like too much about this car is going to be pretty tedious, but it's actually going to be when you have this car in neutral if you sat at lights or something or you're in first whatever once you're just idling you'll not be able to pick it up on the camera but the car actually has quite a lot of vibration to it i don't know if that's just because it's so small and the engine's just chugging away um, and it's not the quietest at all for a small engine um it, there is quite a lot of engine noise that comes in from the front of the bonnet and whatever into the cabin i just think with such a small, it's, I mean, it's not like it's a, a loud engine in any means, but I just think when it's such a small car, you'd expect it to be like a little more quiet in here. And you definitely, I, I, I definitely wasn't expecting the vibrations that you get when you sat in the car. You might slightly be able to pick it up, I'm not sure. But yeah, if you're in traffic or whatever, or just sitting idling like I am now, I know I shouldn't be, but... Um, yeah, there's quite a lot of engine noise that comes into the cabin and the vibrations are quite substantial. Like I can feel my chair vibrate and I can feel my knee vibrating against the door. Um, and you hold onto the wheel and the wheel vibrates as well. It, it is slight and it is just a, a small shudder, but it's enough to notice it. And I've never really noticed that on another car before. Obviously you can hear the engine run on any car that you're in, but this one just seems to be a lot louder than I've actually realized. And I, I don't really know why. Um, so yeah, that was going to be the fifth and final thing, but I'm going to add one more thing in and that is going to be this 3D, um, display is fine for the most part, 
but I do think that after a while, it makes your eyes go a little bit funny. And I know people who are maybe in the older generations or wear glasses or whatever, you might find that a bit uncomfortable to look at for a long amount of time, especially if you sort of, if you move around, you, you sort of see like different holograms of the 3D. And yeah, you might just find that a bit irritating, a bit annoying. It might make your eyes go a bit funny. Um, square eyes is to say if you look at a TV too long or you sat too close. I think that is one of the things that um, you might also get in this one. So those have been the five things that I haven't enjoyed about this uh, Peugeot 208 GT. There is a lot of things I have liked. I'm going to do another video of the five things that I love as always. Apologies that I have actually been in the car for the whole of this one. Um, everything's been pretty much an in-car experience with this one um, and the things I don't like sometimes it's an aesthetic thing about the car or um, a way a, a car is shaped or whatever or yeah there's other things where I can get out the car and show you but this one unfortunately has been all inside the car hopefully I've managed to get my points across um, either way sorry it's not maybe the most exciting thing to look at just looking at my my white legs um, but yeah the other five things that I have heard about the Peugeot 208 Cheers for watching. I hope you've all enjoyed it. Drop a like, drop a comment, give us some feedback, give us some constructive criticism as always. Um, and hopefully you can drop a sub and I'll catch us all in another video in the future. Cheers for watching. Catch us later.